unique self actually changes everything. It changes everything in almost every field, every discipline, every endeavor, every arena of human experience. So for example, if you want to identify your vocation, right? if you do that from a unique self place, it's completely different than just trying to figure out what am I good at. When you actually bring unique self to bear and you realize you have a unique perspective and unique gifts that emerge from that perspective, that creates unique obligation. right? You, you begin to approach the vocation issue in a completely right, different way. You're not hunting for a job. You're looking for a way to give your unique gifts in the world. One, two, relationships. Right? Who do I want to relate to? Who do I want to be involved with in the world? I want to be involved with someone who when I'm with them, my unique self in its most stunning, beautiful depth shows up. In every relationship, different parts of us are evoked. If I'm with someone who evokes something false in me, who evokes something counterfeit in me, who evokes a kind of excessive identification with ego in me, who invokes right, that which is ultimately not authentic to my essence, my unique self, well, that's not exactly the person I want to be with. I want to be with someone who, who evokes my unique self and two, who can partner with me in giving my unique gifts, either by creating a space for me to give my unique gifts or by contributing to my unique gifts or by seeing me in my fullness right, and supporting the unfolding of my unique gifts in the world. And of course, I want to be with someone who I help them and provoke them to show up in their fullest unique self and enable them and help them and partner with them in whatever way it is in giving, expressing, and enacting their unique gifts in the world. So when I approach relationship from a unique self perspective, right, my entire search for partnership for a partner or for partners, completely changes. Three, love. Love changes completely when you begin to talk about it from a unique self perspective. When you begin to realize that love is not merely an emotion, but love is a perception, and it's a unique self perception, your whole understanding of love shifts. Sexuality. We think that sex is one thing, but actually there are many types of sexing. Sexing is a verb, and to be able to outline the seven or eight major types of sexing and understand within that context what unique self-sexing is and what that means changes my whole understanding of sexuality. Shadow, number five, right, shadow, right, shadow, doing shadow work, integrating the shadow. When you begin to understand that shadow is not as most Jungian teaching and post-Jungians discuss, shadow is not generic. Shadow is not merely your shadow qualities of, you know, rage and pettiness and contraction and jealousy, right, and, and promiscuity, right, when it's inappropriate, right, or you know, different forms of, 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 of kind of deception when they're inappropriate. But it's not all of those, shadow is not all of those shadow qualities. Shadow at its core is your unlived life. Shadow at its core is your distorted, your unique, unique self. Shadow is a unique self distortion. When you begin to understand that, and you understand that shadow actually has the same DNA property of your unique self, that you can actually follow your unique shadow back to its source, the entire understanding of shadow work completely changes. You begin to understand that there is no such thing as shadow, there's unique shadow, Shadow is not shadow qualities, but your unique self distortion. And you can actually follow your unique shadow back to your unique self, tracing it in a tantric fashion, tracing it psychologically, tracing it spiritually back to source. That opens up an entire new world. That's five. Six, when you talk about parenting, what's the role of a parent? The role of a parent becomes not to make their child happy, Right? Because you can't ensure a child's happiness. Because ultimately, happiness is a byproduct of living your unique self. So parenting is to enact a space 
which allows for the unique self-emergence of a child, completely changes your entire perspective in three sentences on parenting. That's number six. Number seven, how do I approach death? How do I approach death? The way I approach death completely shifts if I understand what it means to be called to live in a unique self. The question at the end of life is, right, have I lived my unique self? When you know that that's the question, that ultimately the universe will invite you to respond to, it changes your, your way of approaching death. It changes your whole relationship, right, to living and dying. And the list goes on and on in literally every single arena of life. An understanding of unique self shifts profoundly and dramatically your relationship to that arena. Unique self is, is, is like integral thought and like any, any profound insight that once the insight is there, it becomes kind of startlingly obvious and it's psychoactive. Unique self is psychoactive, meaning it actually moves in you. It moves in the way you think about things. And it actually changes the way you approach virtually everything. Creating community, right? Creating what we call sometimes evolutionary we space. Creating a we space is fundamentally, fundamentally different if you're deploying unique self technology, right? Because if you're in this kind of no self enlightened state, you can't form community because there's only one no self or one true self in the world. We're all one, so there's no community. If we're in our natural egoic state, we can't form community because there's too much clash. The best we can do is to let our egos recede for a moment to create a shared space, but merely for the purpose of actually getting our ego more than it would have gotten by itself. But there's no real connectivity. So the only thing, the technology of creating a genuine we space is only unique self because unique self is the currency of connection. Unique self is the puzzle piece that allows you to connect to another and begins to weave authentic community. And so community, that's the seventh arena, right? Completely changes right, when you actually understand it through the prism of unique self. Right? Unique self is the change that changes everything. It's not just an idea. It's not a concept, right? It's an expression of the essence of being and becoming. And when you let it move into you, when you actually awaken to your unique self, and you can't awaken just by hearing about it, you awaken by deeply entering into right, unique self space. And that's what we're gonna be doing in the unique self course. And the unique self course will be enacting a unique self process in which you get a deep understanding both of what, what is the nature of your own unique self and how unique self begins to impact, shape and reshape literally every dimension of your being and becoming as a kind of psychoactive substance, as a kind of DNA that works in you and works you, awakens you, enlivens you, right, and offers an ability to approach, engage, and act, and live life from this stunningly awake place. Wow.